Peace be upon you. So the Quran puts a lot of emphasis on the rights of orphans. And this is representative of a Quranic society where the individuals with the least say, the smallest voice, the least protected are disproportionately emphasizing the Quran to make sure that their rights are not violated and they're not taken advantage of or victimized. And this is a sign of a great society. Mahatma Gandhi had the quote, a nation's greatness is measured by how it treats its weakest members. These individuals, these orphans who have the least say in a society, when they're treated fairly and equitably, it shows that that society is just and it's a prosperous society. But when individuals with status, with power, trample on the rights of those who don't have this, it shows that that society is unjust, that it's an unfair society. And an orphan in any society is typically the bottom of the status of that society. Because a child with a parent has a parent who's going to advocate for their best interest. But if there's not a parent to advocate on the behalf of that child to make sure that their rights are not trampled, that they have the best chance of surviving and thriving in that society, their prospects are very bleak. And I saw this firsthand in uh, selecting schools for my daughter. So last year, my daughter started uh, kindergarten and we were evaluating schools. And I noticed there was one commonality between a good performing school and a bad performing school. And it didn't have to do with if it was private or public, if it was in an affluent area or not. Single-handedly, the one metric that seemed to correlate with the performance of a school was how involved those parents were in that school. The schools that had stronger PTA, more parent involvement, more parent volunteering, performed exceptionally better than the ones with less. And again, this didn't have to do with if it was private or public or if it was a affluent area or not. And I'll give you an example. In one town over, which was a very affluent area, you had a lot of wealth move into that area from China. And they moved there obviously because of the jobs, but also because the schools were ranked so highly. But what happened was after all these families moved in, they enrolled their kids in the school, the school's uh, performance dropped dramatically. And the reason was because these parents that migrated here, they didn't understand that the reason the school was doing good was because of the parent participation. And these parents were not willing at the time or knowingly uh, participating in the school. And after realizing that that was the reason for their downfall, once the parents started participating in the school, all of a sudden you saw the performance of that school dramatically increase. And it's because who cares more about the kids' well-being, the kids' education, the parents themselves? So an individual, a child, an orphan who doesn't have this luxury of a parent to advocate on their behalf is going to be stuck with whatever the system has to offer them. And if a society is not regarding these individuals, then their likeliness of thriving in that society is going to be astronomically lower. So... I was reading and I was trying to understand, you know, what is an orphan? And naturally, I mean, if you think about it, definition, textbook definition, someone who doesn't have a mother or father, uh, you can extrapolate that to say someone who doesn't have a bread earner. We see this in Surah 4 verse 3 where it's telling the believers at the time of Prophet Muhammad that they could marry the mothers of the orphans who lost their fathers in battle and if they deemed it best for the orphans. So, not having someone advocating on your behalf, being able to serve as a protector for you, is a sign of an orphan. But I read this verse and it dawned on me that it might be even more than that. In Surah 89 verse 15, it reads, When the human being is tested by his Lord through blessings and joy, he says, My Lord is generous towards me. But if he tests him through reduction in provisions, he says, My Lord is humiliating me. And then it continues, it says, Wrong. It is you who brought it on yourselves by not regarding the orphan and not advocating the charity towards the poor and consuming the inheritance of the helpless orphans and loving the money too much. And I thought about this. How many people does this apply to consuming the inheritance of the helpless orphans? Because if you think about it, very few people are going to be the uh, arbitrator to hold the inheritance of an orphan in its traditional sense. But then I realized something. Every future child that is going to be born into this world is inheriting this earth. And the decisions we make in this world 
of what kind of a society we have, how we treat this earth, what kind of laws we put into practice is going to disproportionately affect future generations. And if we're making decisions at their detriment, then what we are doing is we are consuming their inheritance illicitly. In Surah 7 verse 100 says, does it ever occur to those who inherit the earth after previous generations that if we will, we can punish them for their sins and seal their hearts and cause them to turn death. And it continues in 1014 reads, then we made you inheritors of the earth after them to see how you will do. Every person at some point is going to inherit this earth. And the decisions that were made by the previous generations are either going to positively or negatively impact them. How they treated this earth. How did they treat the water supply, the air, the laws that they instituted, you know, the debt that they collected. How is this going to affect future generations? In Surah 6 verse 165, it says, He is the one who made you inheritors of the earth. And he raised some of you above others in rank in order to test you in accordance with what he has given you. Surely your Lord is efficient in enforcing retribution and he is forgiver most merciful. Each of us, when we come into this world, are given different ranks. We have different access, different affluence, different amounts of money, provisions, all these things. And the question is, how do we use these? Do we use these at the detriment of individuals who don't have a voice, individuals who are yet to speak up for themselves, these future generations? In Surah 2 verse 204, it reads, Among the people, one may impress you with his utterances concerning this life and may even call upon God to witness his innermost thoughts while he is the most ardent opponent. As soon as he leaves, he roams the earth corruptingly, destroying properties and lives. God does not love corruption. When we allow a society to partake in corruption, to partake in evil deeds, deeds that are going to leave future generations worse off, what we're doing is we're robbing future generations of their inheritance. God tells us in Surah 7 verse 74, it says, Recall that he made you inheritors after Ad and established you on earth. It says, You shall remember God's blessings. Do not roam the earth corruptingly. It's easy to read these verses of the Quran and think that they don't apply to us because I'm not responsible for any orphans. But the reality is every decision we make when it impacts society, the examples we set, if it has a negative impact, we are detrimentally affecting future generations. In Surah 25 verse 63, it reads, The worshippers of the Most Gracious are those who tread the earth gently, and when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace. It's our duty as submitters to tread the earth gently. You know, I'm not one to buy into the a lot of the... Uh, fear tactics they use around global warming. But I do consider myself an environmentalist because I care about the water supply, the air quality, the uh, the soil, the environment to make sure that it's pleasant, not just for my generation, but for future generations to come. God warns us in Surah 30 verse 41, it reads, disasters have spread throughout the land and sea because of what the people have committed. He thus lets them taste the consequences of some of their works that they may return to the right works. A lot of the global warming, in my opinion, is government meddling in people's day-to-day -day lives. The reality is we all have an interest to make sure that our water supply is uh, safe, that our air quality is good. You hear of some of these societies that let their water supply get so polluted, so contaminated, that it's not even safe to take a shower. Or places where the air quality is so horrendous that they say it's equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. Now, when we do this, all we're doing is we're causing detriments throughout the land and the sea and things that are going to impact not just our generations, but future generations who don't even have a say in the decisions that are being made. When God tells us to regard the orphan, it's talking about regarding those who are yet to even come to this world. Those individuals who don't even have a say on the table to the decisions that are being made, but they are the ones who are being negatively impacted if we make bad decisions and it's not limited to environmentalism in economics, you know, a country that takes large amounts of debt to fund its liabilities, to fund its social programs, its healthcare, Medicaid, Medicare, all these things, these benefits that they get 
at the expense of future generations who have to pay that debt. This isn't right. Currently in the U.S., the uh, government public debt is $22 trillion. That means every newborn baby has about a $62,000 public debt hovering over its head. And this is before it's even alive. This is not fair. If you take in consideration unfunded liabilities, then it comes out to about a million dollars per individual who's liable, who's not even here to speak up against this. You know, when we rob from future generations to have amenities in our lives, what we're doing is we're stealing the inheritance of future generations. We're loading them up with debt. This is sadly what happened to the children of Israel. This is how they ended up in bondage is because they were constantly taking debt for what they didn't have. And future generations had to work off that debt through uh, slavery in order to be able to pay back what they inherited, this debt that they inherited. The most common form of slavery throughout history has been that of people paying off debt, indentured servants, individuals who didn't get to live a fulfillful life because they had debt to pay off. And when we're putting this massive debt on future generations that they are going to be responsible for paying off, all we're doing is we're burdening them and we're robbing them of their inheritance. So these decisions we make, the laws that we pass, the way that we treat our environment, not only is it going to affect us, but it's going to affect future generations. And Abraham gives us the example in 2684. It says, let the example I set for future generations be a good one. We want to make sure the decisions we make, the world that we leave for future generations, these future orphans, that it's a good one, one that they can thrive in, one that they can benefit in, not one that's going to leave them worse off. So how do we fix this error? How do we make sure as a society we're making good decisions for future generations? And, you know, you could look at a very complicated solution, but a very simple one. It reminds me when I go to the gym and they have a simple rule. They say, re-rack your weights. <laughs> and all it takes is if we each do our part, we do our own little part to make sure that the place that we've inherited is better off when we leave than when we got there, then we would all have a happy thriving place to live. There is a saying, it says, let everyone sweep in front of his own door and the whole world will be clean. That if we each make the decisions, each time we go to vote, each time we have a decision what product to buy, if we think about the consequences, not just for this generation, not just for the people that are living today, but for future generations, God willing, we can make good decisions that are going to impact people in the future. In Surah 4, verse 85, it reads, Whoever mediates a good deed receives a share of the credit thereof, and whoever mediates an evil work incurs a share thereof. God controls all things. The decisions we make have a ripple effect. They have ramifications for future generations. And these are all going to be accounted for. You know, the difference between a believer and a disbeliever is a believer believes in the hereafter, believes in the day of judgment, that all their deeds are going to be held accountable irrespective if they were alive to see the consequences or not. In Surah 36, verse 12, it reads, We will certainly revive the dead, and we have recorded everything they have done in this life, as well as the consequences that continue after their death. Everything we have counted is in a profound record. We like to think that, you know, after we make a decision, the it's said and done, there's nothing that can be done, but we have to be conscientious in the sense of the impacts, the ramifications, the consequences that are going to transpire based on that decision. You know, when we vote to load future generations with excess debt, when we choose to be wasteful with the supplies and the blessings that God has given us, where we choose to be destructive to the environment, polluting the water, polluting the air supply, making these decisions, these things are all going to be accounted for. In Surah 1849, it reads, The record will be shown, and you will see the guilty fearful of its contents. They will say, Woe to us! How come this book leaves nothing small or large without counting it? They will find everything they had done brought forth. Your Lord is never unjust towards anyone. All these decisions we make are going to be accounted for. So we have to be conscientious not to rob future generations of their rights. In 89.17, I'm going to read it again. It says, Wrong, it is you who brought it upon yourselves by not regarding the orphan and not advocating charity towards the poor and consuming the inheritance of the helpless orphans and loving the money too much. Sometimes we have to bite the bullet and make the hard decisions and take 
the consequences of our decisions ourselves rather than kicking the can down the road and putting it on the backs of future generations. When we do that, we're robbing these individuals of their rights. We are not being a just and equitable society. And it's our duty as submitters to be equitable in all our dealings, to treat people fairly, even those who aren't at the table to speak up. God willing, we're going to end there. If you guys got comments or questions, please hit us up at crontalk at gmail.com. And until next time, peace and God bless.